Welcome. This is the second video in the People Pleasing video series. So if you haven't seen the first video, make sure that you click here or down below. The title is How People Pleasers Feel Inside. What do you think of when you hear the word peacekeeper? What do you think of when you hear the word peacemaker? Now, an even more important question is, which one are you? In this video, you will learn how to distinguish between the two and identify which one may apply to you. I start off each video with a trivia question for you. In the comments, I want you to write what you think the answer is. And at the end of this video, I will give you the answer for you to see how well you did. The trivia question for this video is, surveying 100 people, what do you think the top three answers are to the question, what emotions cause you the most pain? It's a little tricky because there are many different emotions, but when you think about this, what do you think the top three answers were when 100 people were asked, what emotions cause them the most pain? Hi, I'm Pam McCloskey, personal development and wellness specialist. We create a pathway of tools and encouragement for women to thrive while alive. If you're new, or even if you're just returning and you haven't done it yet, make sure that you click on the subscribe button below and click on the bell so that you're notified every time a new video is available. It's great to have you here. Say hi in the comments and don't forget to include your answer to the trivia question. Peacemaker or peacekeeper? Let's look at the characteristics of a peacekeeper first. Peacekeepers avoid upsetting anyone. They walk on eggshells. They're afraid of causing problems or wanting people. They just want everyone to be okay. And so they micromanage and try to make the environment a place where it's just always smooth sailing. Christians will often tend to think that Matthew 5, 9 and Romans 12, 18 apply in being a peacekeeper. Actually, the verse says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. Well, you take that and you think, okay, I, I need to make sure that I keep peace with everyone so I should do what anyone asks me to do. I should make sure that there's no emotional damage going on or any kind of rough waters. Let's walk on eggshells and let's just make sure everything is okay. And that is not what that is saying. And the more you learn about what a peacemaker is, you'll understand that you don't have to walk on eggshells. You don't have to stuff your feelings. You don't have to pretend like things aren't happening for you to be a peacemaker. So let's keep going and you'll be able to identify the difference. Peacekeepers do not express their true feelings. They do this because they're preventing arguments. They do not want people to be upset with them. They don't want to cause contention. They feel like if they express their true feelings, somebody is going to be upset with them. And that is just way too overwhelming for them. So they will agree with somebody else even if they don't feel the same way as them they will stuff their feelings and stuff their feelings and then they end up becoming very resentful because they begin to feel like they can't ever express their feelings and that's not a healthy place to be peacekeepers also avoid conflict at all cost they hate confrontation they will not confront other people because to even think about having to confront someone makes them feel very ill inside so they will avoid confrontation which also will avoid conflict but the problem is is that if you never have a confrontation you never get to express how you feel 
you you might feel things inside and you may want to say some things but you won't do it because you're afraid that that person's not going to agree with you or that they might be angry with you and um it will a lot of times really what it comes down to is they feel like it is just so much simpler just to agree even if they don't like it they will agree with it because they do not want to confront they do not want to head you know hit it in the head and say hey this is not how i feel or this is not what i want um, have you ever gone somewhere with someone and they wanted to do something else and you really didn't want to but you said you would why because you don't want confrontation you don't want that person to say anything to you that you might have to stand up for yourself and and that's part of a peacekeeper they will not stand up for themselves because of confrontation they avoid it at all cost most people don't like confrontation it is a little scary. Even people who will have confront people when they're wrong or when they're standing up for their rights, it you always, well, most of us, usually get the butterflies in our stomach. That is very common and it does happen. But the key is you will always be a peacekeeper if you stuff your feelings and you always withdraw and never speak your mind. Now, of course, there is a gentle way to do it, and we'll talk about that with a peacekeeper or with a peacemaker. But you have to, you know, you do have to be gentle about things. But for you just to stuff things is not healthy for you and it is not going to be healthy for any relationship that you have. But really, when you think about it, a peacekeeper, what they're really trying to do is they're trying to keep everyone from being mad at them and they're trying to make things okay for everyone in their life. Now, you're going to understand this. If you micromanage all of what's going on with people and how they see you and um, are you keeping everyone happy you're going to be exhausted you're going to be resentful you're going to feel like just like i said in video one for this series how a people pleaser feels inside this is why they feel this way because they know what's right they know what needs to be said they just can't do it like it makes them ill inside to think about saying some of the things that's going on in their head peacekeepers continually apologize even when it's not their fault have you ever done that where you said you were sorry um, and then you said you were sorry and then you said you were sorry or have you ever met someone where they just say they're sorry a lot like almost every three or four words it's I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I did that I'm I'm sorry I moved your cup I, I'm sorry oops I'm sorry okay that is something that a peacekeeper does because they feel responsible for everyone and everything that's going on and they take on all of that guilt and all of that shame and hold it pretty pretty deep in them and it's it's almost like a root that's in them and to be able to let go of that it's hard for them and when you think about um, someone apologizing all the time what I think about is wow how much responsibility do they take on that's not theirs. How much responsibility do you take on that's not yours? Stop and look at how many times you apologize in your conversations when you're out with people. 
pay attention to that because that's going to be an eye opener. It's going to be a little cue as to whether you are a peacekeeper or a peacemaker. A peacekeeper's motto is do nothing to rock the boat. Keep everything smooth sailing and everybody will be okay. So what does this look like? Well, let's use this example. Say you have some teenage children in your home and they are doing some things that they shouldn't be doing or maybe they're talking in a way to one of the parents, say you're the mom and they're talking to you in a way that they really shouldn't be talking to their parent. You understand what I'm saying? And you, the mom, don't say anything because you don't want to tick them off. Why? Because you know what happens whenever they get in that mode when they're ticked off. You get the blunt of their heat, right? And so you, you just say, you know, you, you know what they're doing is wrong, but you need things to be smooth selling so you say nothing. And what does that get you? That gets you teenagers who walk all over you, who say whatever they want because nobody does anything. Okay, another example might be, say an uncle is giving um, your child money and say your child did something, uh, was grounded, say he did something, he got grounded and, um, or maybe we should go here. Let's say that he stole something and you have, you have disciplined them and your uncle comes in and he gives them money and you want so badly to say to him, Hey, don't give him money. He, d he cannot have money right now. I just grounded him. He's not allowed to have money, but you don't say anything. You just let it go. Why? Because you want the smooth water. You don't want to rock the boat. Why? Because maybe the uncle in the past has said something to you. Say you, say you even alluded to how you felt and he belittled you or said something that made you feel like the message was I cannot express my feelings about this I cannot stand up for what I know what is right and tell him he cannot give my son the money is it your right to say something absolutely but inside you feel like you can't and it is just way too overwhelming to think about saying anything to the uncle. Now, the other thing is, and I alluded to this a little bit about peacekeepers tend to be passive aggressive, stuff, stuff, stuff their emotions. And what happens when you stuff so much, there's no more room. You're gonna blow, but you were not created to stuff your emotions, okay? And I know, I know that's easy to do because Sometimes you don't have time to deal with your emotions or sometimes things are so overwhelming that you can't. But there comes a time where you do have to deal with your emotions and stuffing them is not a good thing to do because you never know when you're going to blow. Perfectionism is a challenge for peacekeepers. They want people to see them as perfect. Now they would never admit that. But what it is, is, is that they don't want other people to see their flaws. They don't want other people to see that they make mistakes. They will try to keep their house perfect. They will try to keep people looking at them a certain way. And for them, it would just be awful if people were to see that they're not perfect, that they do have flaws, or that they can't do everything right. You know, we're human. We, we're going to make mistakes. We are not going to be good at everything we do. We are not always going to say the right thing. In these videos, sometimes I make mistakes because I am human. 
to be perfect is so exhausting. And I know that because I struggled with that myself. And, but the thing is, is that a peacekeeper will do it because they don't want people to, again, reject them, to leave them. Also, losing control is just not acceptable. Like, they have to be in control all the time. Um, and again, they may not even acknowledge that. But being, being in control of what's going on, so that's why they're micromanaging they're trying to micromanage how people see them, how people feel about them. They're micromanaging the environment around them. They are just trying to always keep things, again, smooth sailing. Now let's look at a peacemaker. Peacemakers avoid avoiding. I know that sounds kind of funny, but they do not avoid like a peacekeeper does. They believe that it is necessary to have some of the conversations that you have to have in order for peace to happen. They realize that sometimes you just have to do the hard things, that taking the easy road often is not the way to go because taking the easy road does not mean that you're actually going to have peace. So a peacemaker will make sure that they have the hard conversations. They will approach people in love. I mean, there is a way to do it for a peacemaker. They, they, are, they are not aggressive. They do not, they're not bulldozers that come in and just bull over you because that's not a peacemaker either. That's a control freak or an aggressor or someone, a controller or someone who wants to be in charge of things. A peacemaker is someone who gently comes in and knows exactly what needs to be said. Um, and what what is beautiful about a peacemaker is, is often they will look to the one who can give them the words to be able to create that gentle peaceful environment. And what I mean by that is they will look to their creator for the words that they need to be able to be peaceful, or they will look for, because you know, they understand that the creator knows what's going on. A peacemaker does not always need to know what's going on. They rely on the one who knows it and knows that he will give them what they need, the words um, the, the patience to be able to endure the situation and be able to step out and say, Hey, um, maybe what we need to do here is talk about this or a peacemaker will, when they're having a conversation with someone and someone says, Oh, I'm just so mad at so-and-so because they should have never, you know, that was, that's the other thing about a peacekeeper is they will go to those people who will listen and they will complain, complain, complain. So if you hear yourself complaining, it's very possible that you might be a peacekeeper. What a peacemaker will say to a peacekeeper is, did you go talk to that person? And of course, the peacekeeper is going to say, no, I didn't do that. Now, why would they? Because that's confrontation, right? But the peacemaker will say, you know what? How about you and I go together and maybe we can go talk to them? Or, you know, maybe a way that you could bring this up is to say this. Sometimes just knowing or having help and being able to say something, having the words, it is, it is such a beautiful thing when someone can say, you know, maybe you could say this and that will help them understand. Or maybe if you do this, sometimes we just need to do things a little bit different than what we're always used to doing. And that's it right there is we keep doing the same thing that we used to do and it doesn't work. If we had a new way of doing things or a new way of saying things, then maybe we could have a little more peace in our life. A peacemaker knows how important relationships are 
and they are very important to them. And so they're aware of how messy relationships really can be. But the neat thing about a peacemaker is, is that they will, they will work with the mess. They understand that relationships can be messy. They understand that, um, that they're not always easy and that you have to work at them. But a peacemaker will take the time to work at them. Why? Because relationships are important to them. And they'll do the hard stuff because they know if, if they do the hard stuff. And when I say hard stuff, I mean like confronting, forgiving, um, being able. And sometimes a, a peacemaker is someone who is just being patient and waiting for the right time. Now, that's a little bit different than avoiding. Avoiding means that you just never have that conversation or you never do that thing. But with a peacemaker, they will assess the situation and they'll look at, okay, well, right now that person is really angry. So I'm going to step back and I'm going to wait. And when that person cools down, then I'm going to go to them and I'm going to talk to them about this. So they know when to be patient, but they don't avoid. They do come back and they'll have that conversation and that's it. They know that relationships are messy. They expect them to be, but they also know that working at a relationship is really important because when you can do those kinds of things, you're actually building the relationships instead of um, watching them dwindle away or erode because of resentment. Peacemakers also know how important forgiveness is. They realize that in order for them to have peace, that they need to be able to forgive. I'm going to say this, and I think a lot of you will understand it, that if you have resentment towards someone, you harbor ill feelings towards them. And you can pretend like they're not there, but let that person do something else that you don't like and watch what happens. For a peacemaker, they understand that they need to forgive. Now, um, I do a whole workshop on forgiveness, and one of the things I talk about is you can forgive too soon. And really, a peacekeeper will make it seem like they've forgiven. Though, though, oh, if someone does something wrong and they say, or they don't even have to say they're sorry, the peacekeeper will be like, oh, it's okay, it's okay, when it's really not okay inside. But for a peacemaker, they are really genuinely forgiving people because they know how important it is for the relationship and how important it is for their own peace. So they don't suppress their feelings, but they find ways to create a welcoming environment for others around them. Peacekeepers are thermometers. When you think of a thermometer, it is something that indicates the temperature of the room. It doesn't change the temperature of the room. It just indicates what the temperature of the environment or the room is. That is what a peacekeeper does. They reflect the emotional temperature of the room and they do nothing to change it. People pleasers are thermometers, but they can be transformed into a thermostat. Do you feel like you're a peacekeeper or a peacemaker? Do you feel like you fluctuate between the two based on different people or different circumstances? If you can relate and you want tools to help you break away from people pleasing, be sure to click on the link below to get your copy of Time For You, Five Simple Habits to Eliminate People Pleasing. Now the answer to the trivia question, surveying 100 people, what do you think the top three answers are to the question, what emotions cause you the most pain? Answers to the trivia questions are, number one, worry. Worry about what others think or rejection or approval. Two, feeling not good enough. And three, lonely. How did you do? Are they your top three? Let me know, leave a comment. 
I'd love to hear your comments and hear what were you, how do you feel? What are your top three? To get the first video for this series, click here to grab your copy of Time For You, Five Simple Habits to Eliminate People Pleasing, click here. Keep moving forward to thrive while alive. See you in the next video.